students, welcome to the online NPTEL course, uh, Contemporary Architecture and Design. In the previous lecture, we uh, started discussing uh, the post-industrial revolution uh, movements and within that we have seen uh, for the machine movement and against the machine movement. We uh, completed for, uh, for the machine movement where uh, designers and architects supported uh, machine aesthetics and also we started uh, against the machine movement and there we have discussed uh, art and craft movement as well as uh, art novo. We started discussing art novo and we will continue today uh, with the discussion uh, with the later part of other designers and architects of art novo and uh, look at their uh, visual expression. So, uh, if we uh, look at diagram uh, grammatically, so here it was uh, 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 the situation of uh, post-industrial revolution where uh, architecture and design uh, fraternity was in the turmoil and they have divided into two opposite uh, pole uh, for uh, their visual expression and in uh, for the machine movement they accepted new technology whereas the against the machine movement they ha have accepted traditional craftsmanship. And within that, there, there are two different movements. So, uh, the uh, characteristics of art and craft movement and art novo was uh, it was uh, a French ter uh, terminology, art novo, uh, and which means the new art. And it was a reaction against the machine, and then uh, it was re uh, uh, reinforced the craftsmanship over uh, mass production. But it was not, uh, it did rejected uh, the new material and uh, new uh, style of uh, new technology and uh, it supported art and craft um, as the art and craft uh, movement did and use, uh, but there was a difference and it use, uh, used uh, new materials as well um, though it um, uh, imbibed the new material as uh, and it blended the um, uh, traditional aesthetics with this new material and the new material was wrought iron glass and ceramic. So, uh, here it started in Europe and as similar to the art and craft movement and flourished between 1880s to 1910 and uh, influenced uh, uh, different uh, paradigms as we have discussed architecture, graphic design, fine arts, industrial design and furniture design. And again it uh, took inspiration from Baroque and Rococo style as well as the classical and medieval style as it was little bit more figurative as it is uh, against the machine movement uh, uh, but uh, the for the machine movement was more abstract. And also it uh, embodied the style of uh, folk visual art. And here we can see the biomorphic uh, design was the inspiration and then uh, there was a distortion with a consistency and that, uh, that's how they evolved their style. So in Art Novo uh, palette if we look at um, as um, in the previous lecture we, have, uh, we were discussing it had the, the style of whiplash line um, and that was a predominant style in uh, which followed many of the Art Novo painting and um, des uh, design and architecture. So here we can see uh, Antonio Gaudi's work, here we can see the uh, whiplash line over here, even in the uh, wrought iron, um, um, uh, wrought iron uh, work in the uh, balcony and uh, Tiffany window also has a lot of uh, intricacy um, and Tiffany glasses and here in the Art Novo product design as well you can see the whiplash lines which is uh, quite different from the art and craft movement as art and craft movement um, also got inspiration from biomorphic design but this uh, fluid lines were uh, um, a stylistic um, um, interpretation uh, stylistic uh, is the style of Art Novo. Here also uh, we can see some of the work uh, Victor Hota's work and uh, we can see the whiplash line uh, flowing from the uh, wall and as well as the uh, uh, railing. Here in the painting uh, um, as well we can see the similar kind of line. Here now uh, let us discuss some other work of uh, Art Novo. Here we have Gustav Klimt's work uh, which is also um, categorized in Art Novo but uh, uh, here we do not see uh, much whiplash line there but here he, what he did is um, he used gold leaf within the painting and we can uh, see a very ornate decoration and though it is uh, to some extent a little bit more geometric than uh, biomorphic but uh, here also we can see in the painting uh, the usage of uh, uh, gold leaf uh, within the painting. But if we look at the Baroque and Rococo style there was also a uh, usage of uh, golden uh, uh, decoration within the uh, 
uh, wall and the roof and here uh, some uh, similar kind of color palette also he have used and here uh, if we look at some other um, designs uh, for example here uh, we have some examples of uh, furniture design by Louis Mozorel he was um, also one of the very uh, pioneering uh, designer in um, Art Nouveau style uh, and here also you see uh, you can see the whiplash uh, the lines have some somewhat uh, fluidity and um, you can call it a uh, inspiration uh, the inspiration can come from the whiplash line as well and there are some biomorphic elements uh, were added within the furniture design as well and here also we, uh, you see the usage of golden um, uh, metallic uh, color within the furniture and here um, here also if you look at the decorations is uh, this is the art nouveau style decoration and here uh, again these decorations are um, uh, stylistic features of art nouveau some of his, uh, his other uh, furniture design and here also you see the asymmetry and along with the biomorphic uh, fluid lines which is a uh, characteristic feature of uh, art nouveau again similar line uh, lines were added over here and again the metallic um, a gold uh, color within the um, furniture design and sa same um, curvilinear format is uh, there and you can see the continuous uh, fluid uh, lines which flows uh, within the furniture and uh, armrest to the uh, legs of the furniture some other uh, works uh, Hector Guimard's work here also you can see this was uh, we were discussing which uh, was designed in uh, this uh, Paris Metro uh, railway uh, station here uh, you see the new material which is iron was uh, used and then uh, the same um, uh, the ornamentation was uh, used in uh, the new material um, iron as well and uh, his work mainly focused on the iron casting and uh, he do, uh, used uh, a lot of uh, iron in uh, 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 the public realm design uh, for example this uh, uh, gateway and then uh, the ma materials uh, entrance and um, everywhere if you look at uh, carefully these fluid lines were there so uh, this was a new uh, stylistic uh, biomorphic uh, design style which was imposed on the uh, wrought irons uh, design otherwise if you look at um, now the for the machine movement there it could have been just a um, uh, construction element and then uh, with no other added ornamentation but here in art nouveau style the new material was adopted but the style was um, the bi uh, biomorphic style which was influenced from uh, which got its inspiration from uh, baroque rococo and the pre industrial evolution uh, style was uh, blended with the new um, uh, in a new material and the technology here we have Carlo Bugatti who is an Italian designer, uh, his furniture design if we look at but this does not have uh, the influence of whiplash line and uh, biomorphic but lot of ornamentation was there and uh, to some extent his ornamentation was a little uh, geometric and he also uh, got inspired from the folk and uh, uh, folk um, uh, art of the uh, uh, of, of that uh, period and if you look at uh, then there was some ex uh, to some extent uh, this was uh, geometric but a lot of ornamentation within that uh, within the furniture was there later uh, uh, when we move towards the time uh, time frame uh, from um, figurative expression we will move uh, towards the um, uh, more geometric expression even later uh, when we will study uh, the uh, design of uh, the later phases and the uh, uh, design of uh, art deco style and others there will be, uh, we will see um, more of a, a geometric expression so uh, here also in art novo it's uh, as it is a uh, time frame and within that there was uh, many different designers so their expression of uh, uh, designing was different so in uh, some cases it will be more uh, biomorphic in some cases they will be more to uh, inclined towards the um, geometric expression but um, as later on the uh, in the later movement we will see more emphasis on the geometric expression uh, rather than the biomorphic uh, curvilinear expressions so here in uh, carlo bugatti's work we will see more geometry but still you will see some ornamentation which will uh, the metal uh, metallic works were imb embedded on the wooden uh, frame which you will also see in klimt's work uh, there were some geometry 
and uh, like the squares and the circles but um, the uh, golden color was overpowering so here uh, are some work other works of uh, carlo bugetti and you will see some curvilinear features and uh, high ornamentation on the um, stool so this is just a stool and then uh, uh, ideal expression of a stool could have been just uh, this is the minimalist uh, way of designing a stool so a uh, uh, table top and four legs but the four legs were translated into a very ornate uh, uh, expression and uh, it was uh, translated into a uh, lot of design elements were added in the um, design so that's why it uh, supports uh, the uh, uh, aesthetic uh, uh, over -emphas uh, emphasized aesthetic value and this is not at all minimal and uh, this is a um, expression of um, also an expression of art novo style so if we look at uh, art and craft movement and art novo side by side both the uh, expressions both the artistic styles was parallel to each other and they also supported the similar um, cause uh, which is a, uh, which uh, they opposed the machine uh, aesthetics and also they supported the uh, local craftsmanship and they have taken also similar inspiration uh, which is baroque and rococo uh, style and also they uh, went to, uh, with the biomorphic style and flora and fauna was the inspiration uh, of their visual style but still they have the uh, stylistic uh, difference in between uh, them so uh, if you uh, want to be very conscious about what kind of design style is there so you have to uh, figure out what uh, are the uh, differences between these two uh, uh, artistic style so if you look carefully this side we have art and craft movement and this side we have art novo in art and craft movement one of the uh, a uh, key feature was tessellation so it will be uh, same uh, motif will be repeated and uh, it will be followed and uh, so here we have some examples of tessellation from uh, william morris but in uh, art novo um, instead of tessellation we have a free flowing line which won't be repeated and then uh, it will uh, uh, the line qualities are similar but no, none of the lines are same so this is whiplash line which is also there in the furniture design and it will be asymmetric uh, mostly so here we have this asymmetry and even in the uh, fun, uh, this um, clock uh, table clock we have a very asymmetric uh, curvilinear line but here in Art Novo you, uh, you see the symmetry and also it will be repetitive and uh, if we look at the furniture design so art uh, and craft movements furniture uh, the overall motif was um, more or less uh, the, uh, uh, it uh, comes through uh, from the traditional uh, way of mental model of a uh, traditional furniture so it looks like a traditional chair but the uh, uh, drapery and the uh, cushion uh, design was different and stylistically it was uh, different and but if we look at uh, art novo's furniture they are drastically different from the previous uh, notion of furniture so this does not look like a traditional uh, stool even this also does not uh, look like a traditional stool there were a lot of tra um, uh, drastic uh, stylistic difference than the previous uh, style and if we look at uh, the uh, uh, architecture as well so it was uh, similarly uh, uh, the same thing was followed if we look at again uh, the whiplash line was followed in the architecture as well and um, if you look at the overall image so this is the architecture of art and craft movement so th that looks like a traditional barn but definitely if we look carefully it uh, it's um, way of uh, uh, treating the facade was different because uh, why they uh, they were stick to the traditional um, style because they have um, supported the traditional craftsmanship so, uh, so the way they have uh, they built the traditional house and uh, these conical roofs and the pitched roofs were there so it was supported and even the uh, chimneys it has a, a typical look of a traditional house but with a stylistic difference so that the uh, artisans and craftsmen can construct this but here the emphasis of a designer was more here the emphasis of a, a traditional uh, artisan and craftsmen were more here the emphasis of a designer's own uh, decision was more and they have imbibed the new technology rather than uh, sticking to the traditional technique of uh, construction here if we look at uh, Antonio Gaudi's work of uh, interior design it is very fluid and very um, different from the previous notion of uh, uh, and in you know, architecture even if you can think that this is a um, way to um, uh, manifest a different stylistic um, notion of a pitched roof so that the pitched roof was there and then it was 
uh, molded, blended with the whiplash pattern. So uh, then the pitch roof become something like this, this with the chimney. But here in the art and craft movement, the pitch roof and the chimney was retained as it was. And then um, similar, um, uh, if you look at the interior over here, you can compare it more with the uh, William um, Morris's interior with the um, uh, Antonio Gaudi's interior de design. There, are, uh, different, uh, there, there is a uh, drastic difference. And also, uh, now if we look at uh, art and craft movement, uh, art and craft movement and art novel together, and how it influenced later stages of modernism. So, art doc, uh, deco is a later uh, uh, sta uh, um, one um, one of the movement of uh, in the later stage of modernism, and this is uh, art and craft movement is not uh, modern; it's pre-modern. And within modern, uh, we have art deco. Art Deco got inspiration from Art and Craft Movement and Art Novo. So, if we look uh, side by side, these are some. Uh, this is Art and Craft Movement, and rest are Art um, Art Novo. And here in Art Deco, we see the tessellation. But tessellation came from Art and Craft Movement. But if we look at the tessellation, it has a gold and um, uh, gold and on black, which is very drastic uh, and very uh, um, eye-catchy uh, combination. And here we see a lot uh, more geometry. Here we have seen uh, in Gustav uh, Klimt's work uh, the use of gold and a uh, little bit of geometry. But here in uh, Art Deco, they have imbibed more uh, geometry so that they can do a mass production. But still, they have uh, got some inspiration from the um, Art Novo, uh, Art Novo, and Art and Craft movement style. Here, they uh, we can see a uh, abstract uh, inspire uh, abstract uh, expression of uh, a foliage, but which is uh, extremely geometric in nature. Here, it uh, it's a chandelier which can give a feel of a, a flower uh, hanging. Uh, flower from the top but this is um, uh, ab in an abstract version you know uh, and uh, with and broken with uh, geometry so that it can be constructed in the uh, industry uh, industry and here also you look at the doorway and here um, a lot of uh, usage of uh, gold golden color is there and um, but still the uh, figure is broken in uh, some geometric pattern and here we see this pattern which is called sunburst pattern which was used extensively in art deco uh, as we have this uh, whiplash pattern in art novo we have sunburst pattern in art deco and here it was uh, it's a wing of a bird which is again uh, broken in some geometric um, expression and we also see the metallic uh, um, um, influence uh, the uh, use of metal in um, uh, in the design. So that was also there. So this uh, uh, again the use of metal and metal uh, metallic color in tessellation, which we will see in Art Deco. So in the next uh, class we will discuss more on uh, the later uh, movements of uh, uh, modernism. Um, uh, so that will start the modernism and from the next class.